What's going on YouTube? Today I have a great Skyrim build for all of you that may help on a one life permadeath legendary playthrough. If you want to see more great Skyrim builds and discussion videos, hit that like button and subscribe. So for this build, the time and effort it takes to realize the power of this build is minimal compared to others. I'd say 4 to 5 hours of gameplay compared to 40 plus hours. It does not require the fortify restoration glitch or any lengthy training of the alchemy, smithing, and enchantment skills to augment your damage output. That said, you can take your damage to the next level with smithing improvements, enchanting, and the occasional potion if you wish. If you did combine it with fortify restoration enchantments, it would ruin the point though because with those you are invisible and you can already one-shot everything. So without further ado, I present to you the Orc Assassin. This build relies on four main skills, Sneak, One-Handed, Illusion, and Conjuration. Sneak is to remain unseen. In a one-life hardcore playthrough, it's possible to die at a low level by getting blindsided by a saber cat. So when you are off the roads and away from settlements, you want to remain in stealth and execute silent rolls. In nearly all cases, something can't kill you if it does not know you were there. Thus, Sneak is the best way to remain alive and your best foolproof defense on Hardcore. Aside from not getting killed though, how are you going to kill enemies on Legendary when we do so little damage compared to Adept? Well, Sneak has the answer. The right side of the tree leads to the Assassin's Blade ability. Um, it multiplies the base damage of a dagger when doing a sneak attack by 15 times. Aside from that, muffled movement may help, but in this build you can basically bear wear clothes and a couple light armor pieces. Moving up the left side we have light foot, which will make dungeons go more smoothly as you won't have random deaths because you missed the pressure plate. If the rule is only one life, you may avoid them through keen perception, but the one time you mess up this will be worth it. Silent roll is especially useful to help us close the gap between moving targets and dragons that have landed. Jump can partially substitute, but this fits the build perfectly. In any case, whether you think these perks are valuable does not matter since you have to get them to unlock the last perk. Before it, we have silence, which also helps you move faster on an enemy when the window of opportunity is short. Finally, we have shadow warrior. This, along with assassin's blade, is the most powerful perk in the sneak tree. It makes enemies start to lose sight of you when you crouch in battle at a distance. You can hide behind rocks, walls, or columns and use the invisibility spell with this to get back in stealth. It is mostly impossible to exit battle and go into stealth without this perk. You can lead with a sneak attack and then run away and crouch so the enemy loses awareness of you if it is too powerful to die in one hit. The build mostly relies on the ability of sneak attack multipliers to make damage so overwhelming that you can one-shot enemies without engaging combat. This minimizes their ability to get a hit on you and maximizes your survival chance on a one-life playthrough. Shadow Warrior makes it possible to repeatedly sneak attack as long as you can run away without getting hit within the window of time the enemy hit sees you. It's death by a thousand cuts for an ebony warrior or a similar opponent. With a muffling effect and invisibility being continually activated, you can stalk dragons when they land and attack from the side with precise spacing. However, there are a few things to watch out for. The dragon can sway to fight an ally and bump into you, finding you. If you swing too far away, you miss. The dragon should not notice but will soon fly away unless dragon rend is affecting them. If you get too close, you touch him and he notices you. Subsequently, he can auto kill you or breathe fire at range, which should doom you. He can also land on top of you and discover you, which will lead to your death. Thus, for a sneak attack dagger build, going Brutus on a dragon is the hardest thing, but possible. As much as you can, if your skills aren't the best, you may want to sit back and let summons do the work when playing hardcore. You can do this in most cases with sneak for a playthrough, but if you do it too much, it's kind of lazy, cowardly, and ruins the point of a stealth build. Like if you're an assassin, you're trying to sneak attack people, but then using conjurations, you're more of like a summoner that just uses them as like your army. This build uses magic because it's that valuable at maximizing its nature, but magic and crafting often sidestep the game's difficulty by breaking your character. 
In the case of dragon fights, the dragon is so perceptive that continual applying of the invisibility spell is necessary just to stay hidden. Your sneak skill, the perks, and the audio-visual obscuring by muffle and invisibility work together to keep you unknown to the enemy while you're approaching. There are stealth enchantments, but these are late game and crafting benefits. The spaces they occupy in your armor are better suited to fortify one-handed so you can one-shot the strongest foes. Next, we have one-handed. This is to improve the base damage of your dagger, which is incredibly important for one-shotting opponents. I'm not sure if this is always possible, but I think you can execute a dual flurry sneak attack and have all three hits count as sneak attacks since they occur in the same movement. So Dual Flurry can synergize with Dagger Speed to make these sneak power attacks execute quickly. Dual Savagery may contribute to sneak dual power attacks. At the very least, Armsman is valuable, while the dual wielding perks may improve your damage substantially. Then we have Illusion. Fully fleshed out, this magic skill can be a powerful substitute to stealth, as you can pacify enemies and avoid combat altogether. In that sense, Sneak and Illusion are redundant with each other. But, Invisibility augments your stealth by making it hard for enemies to perceive you visually. Muffle is a spell that silences your footsteps as much as possible. Muffle can appear on enchantments, so you only need to focus on invisibility casting. It's also worth noting that the Silence perk of the Sneak Tree can essentially substitute Muffle in the first place. So. You can half the cost of the spell with Expert Illusion, then go on the right side of the tree to pick up Quiet Caster. This will make the recasting of invisibility more seamless as you only appear for a split second and now it has no noise. If you want to go further, you can maximize calm spells to dungeon crawl both openly and passively. Conjuration is a pull out all the stops way of getting through the game. Hide in stealth and repeatedly cast summon at a distance to spam one enemy with an endless army of Atronox. Since you have silent casting, they won't know you did it. Conjures can also distract or move an enemy in the right position for a sneak attack. In my fight with Astrid, I literally just use a bed and jumping in a corner behind it because she couldn't reach it. The way Skyrim's NPC AI works, they can't jump. Save your followers who just jump down little drops. This is peak Skyrim, it just works pathing. You can sure climb a mountain, but they can't. I could have hidden and waited behind the bed for stealth and sneak attacking her, but my dagger sucked and it would take seven more hits. One screw up in movement in that small shack and I'm dead. This build is supposed to be a get good fast with low effort type deal for you when you only have one life in a hardcore playthrough. I chose to kill her because I didn't want to be a Sithis worshipper and her dagger is just as strong as a dag dragon bone dagger. The reason I wanted the build to be low effort quick gains is that if you play hardcore and die, it's better to lose a few hours than a few weeks worth of effort. Once behind that bed, I spammed Fire Atronox until she died. If worse came to worse, you can fall back on summons if you're definitely stumped by a foe or area that makes sneak attacks impossible. It's quick to level and not strictly necessary like the other perks or skills, but highly useful. One other skill is alteration. This paralyzed can help you run away or hold enemies in one place for conjures without being able to attack. The Atronach perk combined with the same standing stone can give you frequent spell negation. That said, the thrill of the build is that it is a Shedinja style glass cannon. A ton of investment goes into min-maxing your combined survivability for warrior or battle mage builds. In this build, it's fun to just plan ambushes correctly and be untouchable, to clear out Nordic tombs and robes. So why did I say to choose an orc? Their once a day power Berserker Rage doubles melee damage for 60 seconds, meaning it will multiply your sneak attack every once in a while on a powerful foe. No other race can do this, so without Fortify Restoration, the orc sneak attack scales in maximum damage the most. It's great to kill Astrid if you don't want to join the Brotherhood to get an endgame dagger, but also the Shrouded Gloves, 
which will double your backstab damage to 30 times sneak attack damage. Since in dragon battles you will cast invisibility a lot, you want the apprentice stone perhaps, typically with some mage robes for decent regeneration of magicka. Robes, a lopsided favoring of magicka over health, and the apprentice stone really make things interesting as you're a perfectly fragile glass cannon. Mages will roast you, Chorus will shred you, but you're smart and they won't see you throughout their shortened lives. You're a few steps away on legendary most of the time anyway from death, unless you put a ton of investment in your character. Why not embrace a paper mache frame, completely obviate the need to tank any hits, and supercharge your majory to put the tiger in paper tiger. The risk and the reward is what makes this build so fun. So your active skills are sneak, one-handed, and illusion with the incorporation of conjuration and alteration at your discretion. But you'll probably say that the highest level enemies and bosses can kill me. I can't hide after the sneak attack. Everybody's got so much stealth that my stealth build is completely weak once I try to assassinate, and I hardly dent their health. Well, I'd say, still, try playing the gorilla game. But if you're not satisfied with direct skills and buffs, you can use crafting. See, you can make Fortify Alchemy enchanted clothing with some perks and enchanting and Grand Soul Gems to Fortify Alchemy. Then make Fortify Enchanting potions with the Fortify Alchemy from your enchantments that you're wearing. Then you can make more Fortify Alchemy clothes buffed by the Fortify Enchanting effect from the potion. To make a long story short, it's a loop where you can reach a cap for the degree of fortifying in both cases. You can drink an optimized Fortify Enchanting Potion to make Fortify Smithing Gear, make a Fortify Smithing Potion with the Fortify Alchemy Gear, and drink the Smithing Potion while wearing your armor of Fortify Smithing to get a powerful Blade of Will, affecting the max power of your sneak attacks. I estimate 2.5 times of an increase in damage. Similarly, you can use a Fortify One-Handed Potion and use Fortify Enchanting Gear based on the fortify one-handed to upgrade that effects percentage and multiply the damage further for your one-handed attacks. Drawing on that, you can use potions to fortify your one-handed, but this will take more effort as you must acquire the ingredients for each kill. It's not really necessary to me, in my opinion. Worrying about maximizing a damage enchantment on a weapon is rather important, pointless, as I don't believe the damage works multiplicatively with your sneak attack damage. So you can skip fortify destruction enchantments. The same can be said for poisons as they add a numerical value of damage to the blow, like weapon enchantments. Your one-handed should be able to one-shot enemies already if you're doing this crafting loop. If you master the crafting skill, sharpen your dagger and fortify one-handed on a ring, Brew a few fortify one-handed potions have on hand, you should be good. Optionally, you may want to have a fortify sneak enchantment or fortify alteration if you're using paralyze. In practice, fortify magic and regeneration on mage robes works well for both conjuration and illusion. If you really wish, put some resources into making some potions and weapon damage enchantments like fire damage, but I don't think it's necessary. So throughout playing this whole playthrough, what have I learned? Dragon fights are more finicky, as a dagger can hardly connect with any part of the dragon. Normal dragon fights, it's just a matter of getting used to the right spacing to sneak attack and run away if you fail. That said, conjuration may be better, or more cowardly methods for a permadeath playthrough. The Alduin fight is difficult because casting heal or drinking a potion breaks invisibility, ruining the grounded time that you could be using to attack him or to become hidden so that you can do a sneak attack on him. Basically, you're trying to get into stealth and be completely hidden and then have the right opportunity, but it's very hard to get into stealth with Alduin, and you have to use Dragon Ren to have him land, and you basically just have to time everything perfectly, start and sneak, and then use Dragon Rend, and then he lands, and wait until you just get to fully hidden, so you can go up to him and make a small sneak attack and do the 30 time multiplier. 
all while this is going on, you got to deal with meteors damaging your health. Often, if you have the wrong balance of stealth before using Dragon Run, the sneak attack won't be available until he lifts up to fly away. It's a very precise hit with much harder spacing due to a possibly different hitbox and advanced coordination of different issues like damage from meteors that requires you to heal, having adequate stealth during Dragon Rend, waiting to become hidden, and hitting the right spot. The breeze on the meteors are dangerous is that they target you even if Alduin does not see you. All in all, stealth, illusion, dagger assassinations are really good for dungeon crawling. But scripted boss fights and secondary effects of a boss enemy need other strategies to maximize your survival chance. In the first Alduin fight, it would seem that Alduin defies the use of conjures to do damage. I would advise using a bow from stealth and picking the Atronach stone. Then you swap as necessary between bow use and casting of its ability. This may be kind of difficult because imagine you have to hotkey and then switch between um, bow use with invisibility, so there might be times where Alduin or another dragon would just be distracted with another enemy like Parthenax, for example. And if you have a better build as far as like really grinding out your defensive statistics, you could hang back in the recesses of like the battlefield and then just like continually pelt him with arrows uh, from a distance, even if they're not sneak attacks, and just have him distracted because continually using invisibility and getting invisible just to get sneak attacks with a bow may not be the best strategy. It's just in extreme circumstances, you might have to do something like that to survive. Now, having fought Alduin and Savangard, it's a bit easier for a dagger user than at the Throat of the World, because the heroes of Savangard do gradual damage as Alduin falls from Dragonrend. You can remain in stealth and theoretically keep hitting him with Dragonrend until they can kill him. Shadow Warrior and Invisibility with the dagger are highly effective in most cases against humanoid enemies. So... You use the invisibility assassination strategy in dungeons and versus humanoid enemies, and then use the Drevel Nelarin quest from the College of Winterhold to maximum on levels through alteration. You give yourself something minimum like 700 health and 350 magicka from your leveling. You can then use ebony flesh, mage armor, and good magicka regen to quickly get you to high armor. Let's recap. The best strategy for legendary permadeath is a Breton hotkeyed max sneak invisibility archer with mage armor and alteration legendary ranks and the Atronach stone. You can use sneak to avoid all the trash mobs and just stock quest objective bosses or baddies like Alduin. Now you're probably thinking, wait a minute. You just played a brutally cunning orc commando that pulls off massive Berserker sneak attack crits at Butterknife range. Well, I switch gears towards the idea of archery because I think it's more viable than dagger sneak attacks due to the poor connection of the dagger with dragons and the all or nothing consequence of a dragon drawing its head towards you if it finds you in sneak. In other words, the build had low defensive investment and a physical hit from dragons was often a one shot. Not very good for a permadeath playthrough. Same thing happened with fire breathing. You could indeed replicate this build with high leveling via alteration. However, you have to ask yourself at that point, is it like the omega point of all builds, the end all be all of builds that can master with playstyle, where it's not even a build anymore because you're using every single playstyle and you're like level 100, you're a mage, you're a warrior, you're a sneak attack, assassin, there is no characterization at that point. If you reach that point with a thousand health, max armor, 85 magic resistance, 80% spell absorption, 500 magicka, of course you can persevere with in stealth on legendary. If your stealth fails, you tank a magic attack and you heal. If your warrior strikes leave you bleeding, you hide and you heal. You run out of magicka, hack and slash with that magicka absorbing axe. There comes an interdependent perpetuation between the character archetypes, and some ace up your 50-hour playthrough sleeve will pull you out of the fire. 
Even with the risk, though, of making this game too easy, I do think that having the Mage Armor perk with Ebony Flesh and 1000 health via Telekinesis leveling and Magic Resistance would be a good strategy to backstab dragons and truly beat the story without ever dying once on a playthrough. In comparison to the Sneak Archer strategy, that would have slower battles, but less risk. My perspective on permadeath is that you should try to maximize your survival chance with the lowest time and effort put in to decrease the possibility of a reset and minimize the loss that you get if you do have to reset. Also, with less effort and time, you can set up again quicker on your next permadeath run. It depends on how glitch tolerant you are, but ultimately the mystic tuning regeneration thing might be a glitch. 100% magic reduction cost that you can get from enchanting I'd consider an emergent effect that the developer should have accounted for. With that, you can instantly level alteration to 100 by fast traveling. The secret of arcana power in Dragonborn can also make this fast travel happen without 100 enchanting. You can max out Sneak, Conjuration, and Illusion, then shuffle your way through the Dragonborn quest to acquire it. In this way, you can get to level 200 or 300 even, although it would still take a while, less time than it would take to do the Drevelis Nilaren strategy with the Mystic Tuning Gloves and using Telekinesis then. Now let's recap on what the solid strategy would be. You grind sneak in the tutorial with Hadvar and sneak attacks with like a dagger or sword. You perk in a magicka 20 times. You sell some crafted potions or firewood to safely get some money without risking dying. Then you buy bound sword, mage light, and muffle from some of the mages like Farngar, Secret Fire. You hit 40 alteration, you buy telekinesis from Willandria, you maximize on illusion and buy invisibility. Then you maximize on Conjuration and buy Storm Matronach. Sneak over to Windhelm and sneak or conjure your way through the Dragonborn DLC until you get Secret of Arcana and Apocrypha. Alternatively, you can use the Mystic Tuning quest to grind to like level 100. Now, you can activate the Secret of Arcana ability and fast travel between Markarth and Riften while holding an object with Telekinesis. You should probably do this until you have 350 to 400 Magicka, by any means, if it's enchantments or just your raw Magicka, and want 1200 in health. Then you want to get Ebon Flesh, Mage Armor, and max out your Spell Absorption and Magic Resistance stats. You should be able to tank a couple physical dragon hits and hide now. Although time consuming, it would help to train Restoration or, to save time, simply stock up on extreme ultimate healing potions. With this setup, you could sneak attack a dragon from range or possibly backstab him, and safely tank hits if you fail. Whichever weapon you use, you must of course maximize that skill. Note that the ratio of damage to magicka consumed is low in destruction. With the stagger perk and 100% spell cost reduction, it may be a viable range strategy, although attacks don't benefit from stealth with destruction. Keep in mind the more power leveling you do to stats and skills, the more likely you are to succeed in one go, but it may also involve into a solid 15 hours of power building at the beginning before you even get into like Bleak Falls Barrow or really move forward with like the main quest for example. In dungeons you'll cast invisibility to skip through combat and conjure storm matronox when draugr make it hard to get through a puzzle you'll have to cast ebb and flesh in battle while using a bow so this build makes some use of weapon switching of course if you wish you could spend more time and combine both like a bow strategy and the value of like dagger sneak attacks if you perk into like one-handed, maximize that skill, and get the Blade of Woe. That could be a way that you could clear out dungeons um, by killing the enemies just through sneak attacks, because it is so effective. As stated, the dungeon crawls can be trivialized by use of stealth and invisibility, while beefing up your defenses and health is important for dragon boss fights.
an over-leveled physical magical tank gorilla breton ballista who fires arrows 100 feet away from a dragon. You may not like it, but this is what peak performance looks like. <laughs> 